Hi there, I'm Christy. And I'm Ezio. And we're vlogging for the Qualitative Election Study of Britain election night special, keeping you occupied while you're waiting for the polling results to start rolling in. This time we want to discuss our participants' impressions of Nick Clegg. So in their brainstorming exercises, when they silently wrote down the words and phrases they associated with Nick Clegg, we're going to sum those up in the same way we did in our focus groups. First by looking at the positives, then looking at the neutrals, and then looking at the negatives, and then telling a little story about how we think all of these attributes fit together to represent the public perception of each of the leaders. So in terms of the positives, we always start with the positives. What were some of the positives people said about Nick Clegg? Well, Nick Clegg came across as likable, a nice guy. People said that he looked very comfortable on stage and they reacted quite positively to that. He came across as intelligent and charismatic. Mm -hmm. In terms of neutral, people would also put some of the positives as neutral. In other words, the, they had that he was a nice guy, he was friendly uh, and solid, but this wasn't enough to actually, for them, move it into the positive category. In terms of neutrals, some of the phrases were things like opportunistic, lapdog for the coalition, or some kind of phrase that indicated his collaboration with the conservatives. And again, so for some people those were negatives, but we have here an example as a neutral. Also privileged, so again this notion of the three main parties' leaders being more privileged than, than average people in Britain and in the UK. Yeah, and in terms of negatives, um, and this is not going to come as a surprise to a lot of people, quite a few participants basically blurted out liar um, and in the discussion a lot of people said yes he has apologized but an apology is not enough for what has happened and the consequences of this um, other negatives again connected to the role of the Lib Dems in the coalition so they called him power hungry uh, lacks conviction weak follower unable to keep promises and then um, other people not many but some people called him smug so generally what we find is that Nick Clegg was, is just not going to be forgiven for the betrayal. It was surprising to me that so many people who were not students named in particular the betrayal of the students on the tuition fees. People, yeah. ret retired people, would mention this in association with Nick Clegg. Yeah. And the other thing, of course, that characterized him was, especially with those former Labour voters who voted Lib Dem tactically, that he had betrayed them and they were never ever going to vote for the Liberal Democrats again. There were people who actually said, maybe I could see myself voting Lib Dem in 10 years time, 20 years time when they've really changed, mm. but not in this election. Yeah. So what was interesting for us was to compare Nick Clegg's uh, impressions or impressions of Nick Clegg uh, with the 2010 impressions. And the two main impressions of Nick Clegg in 2010 were who? So people actually writing who, question mark, <laughs> and then um, honest or trustworthy. And it's the second bit yeah. that is so interesting because compared to David Cameron, Gordon Brown in 2010, Nick Clegg was seen as being honest because he would speak to the camera and he would give you the figures in the leaders debates. He was seen as trustworthy. And then this about turn might explain the real intensity mm -hmm. of it's the stubbornness. feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The intensity of the feeling that they attribute to him, why people are not willing to forgive him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think most people are, you know, cynical enough and smart enough to know politicians will slide the truth or speak in a way that um, hides information that might people might find you know, not, they, not to their liking. But because Nick Clegg went from this sort of perception of being quite honest and trust, trustworthy, and almost immediately after Clegg mania started giving up things and showing himself to be the exact opposite of how he had presented himself, that betrayal is really stuck in the British populace's um, mind. And really, whenever he comes on stage, if he's comfortable and relaxed and even convincing on camera, they still can't get over that betrayal. Yeah. Uh, we had one participant who said, uh, while watching the, I think it was watching the third, the uh, question time appearance, um, that they found him very convincing and they found that they were agreeing with what he was saying. And then as soon as the television went off, they were like, oh yeah, I can't, I, I, the, the whole tuition fees episode came back into their mind and were like, yeah, I can't believe him. Yeah. So that is really what is going to be the defining feature of Nick Clegg in this election and we'll see to what extent that carries over to the Liberal Democrats as the night wears on. Yeah. So 
back in an hour, this time with Nicola Sturgeon, a very exciting Leader Impressions video. Um, so in, in an hour, soon, um, we'll see you guys then. <laughs> I've been Christy. And I'm Edzia. See you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>